Hi everyone, my name's Louise and I'm going to be talking to you about jellyfish today. So if you didn't know, we actually breed our own jellyfish here at Sea Life Kelly Tarleton's Aquarium. And you can see the start of this amazing life cycle in our polyp tank, which is the one in this picture. It uh, just sits between our two moon jellyfish displays. So if you know what to look for, you can actually recognize um, some parts of the jellyfish life cycle within these displays. And today I'm going to talk you through what goes on behind the scenes. And hopefully next time you're in, you can have a look and see for yourself. So throughout their life cycle, jellyfish can have two different types of bodies. Uh, the medusa is the bell-shaped jellyfish that you're used to seeing. And the polyps, which are a lot smaller, they're about the size of a pinhead, and they are attached to the surface, and they look more like an anemone um, or a flower. So basically, the medusa phase is able to reproduce sexually by releasing sperm and eggs into the water column. Uh, this can create planula, which is the larval phase, uh, which means that it's floating. And that, in turn, will settle onto a surface, attach, and then turn into polyps. Now, these adult jellyfish live for less than two years, but the polyps can actually live for several decades. And unlike the medusa form, polyps are able to reproduce by essentially cloning themselves. Uh, so the question that we're going to be looking at today is how we get from the picture on the left to the picture on the right. Just so you kind of know what you're looking for, um, this picture I just took uh, with my phone. It's a polyp that has attached itself to the front of our polyp display. Um, and you can see the parent polyp and then a smaller polyp uh, budding out the side of the stalk. Uh, so this is all stuff that you're able to see um, quite easily if you look closely. So we're going to be taking a really close look today under the microscope. Basically, four polyps to create uh, baby jellyfish, which are called ephyra, which we'll move on to shortly. They use environmental cues. So we basically need to create a change in water temperature, and this induces a process called strobilation. So the polyps will start to darken in colour. They appear to elongate, and then it looks like they stack up like little plates, one on top of the other. So you can see in this picture um, those stacks starting to form. Each polyp can actually split into about 20 of these plate-like segments. Uh, and this tower that we can see under the microscope here is referred to as a strobula. So this is what it looks like under the microscope. It's a little bit more difficult to see with the naked eye, though. Um, if you look closely at this picture, again, it's just one that I took uh, with my phone from the polyp tank. This is what it looks like to the naked eye. So next time you're diving or snorkeling or even visiting Kelly Tarleton's, uh, do keep an eye out for them. Um, even without the environmental cues and temperature changes that we can induce here at the aquarium, um, this will happen every, every few months. It's just a kind of natural part of the life cycle. So the next thing that happens, uh, which we can have a really close look at here, is when each of the polyps are ready after about a week or so of being stacked up, but it can vary, the stack will slowly start to pulse. And eventually the individual plates will break away and they will become what is called an ephyra, uh, which is a baby jellyfish. So that's actually what we can see here, uh, where the ephyra is labelled. That's one starting to break away from the, from the polyp stack. And here you can see really clearly um, the separation. So the first phase of the free swimming life cycle, the ephyra stage, um, and then that's next to the polyp stack. So remembering that these guys are only about the size of a pin when this is happening. So with the ephyra, uh, this is the kind of shape that they have. They haven't actually developed their bells yet. Um, and what you can see, the dark spots inside this ephyra are actually sea monkeys um, or brine shrimp. So we feed them sea monkeys um, twice a day and they're 24 hour hatch out. So they're really, really small. Um, and then that's basically going to help these ephyra grow. They'll develop bells. Um, and once they get big enough, which is usually when they're about the size of a 20 cents coin, um, that's when we're able to put them out on display for you guys to see at the aquarium. So 
it'll take just a few weeks for them to be able to develop those bells and, and grow enough for us to put them on display. Um, and then they'll just continue to grow into these larger uh, medusa phases of the jellyfish life cycle that you are no doubt more familiar with. Um, so we just wanted to give you guys a bit of a closer look at what kind of goes on behind the scenes um, and at what is a really interesting life cycle that not many people know about and sometimes gets overlooked. Um, so yeah, if you do have any questions, then just pop them in the comments below um, and our jellyfish team will get back to you. So thank you for watching um, and don't forget to have a little bit of a closer look at the polyp tank next time you're walking through and just see if you can recognize um, any of those factors. And hopefully the ephyra that we have just been breeding this past week uh, will be ready for display for next time you come in. So that's how it all works. Thank you for watching. Hear from you soon.